The second hearing in our period of sessions, um, yeah, okay. 183rd, and um, it's the first day of hearing and the second hearing this morning. And this hearing is on the situation of human rights in the context of impunity in Nicaragua. And it was requested by various civil societies um, who um, I will not name at this time because they would identify themselves, please, when they speak. And each, since the state is not present at this hearing, the civil society time for presentation will be 40 minutes, and um, which is a total of what the state and the civil society would have had. So you have the total time. And then uh, Mr. Andre Sanchez, the UN representative for Central America and the Caribbean, will have seven minutes to present. We of the members of the panel of commissioners will have 20 minutes for questions, comments, and interventions. And um, this civil society group will also have 20 minutes after the commissioners have intervened. And then for the commission, three minutes to close the hearing. Thank you very much. We will now, oh, I should say um, that the objective of the hearing is to make available to the commission updated information on the lack of conditions for delivery of justice at the domestic level. And with this, to contribute to a global debate for the adoption of extraordinary verification and accountability mechanisms to combat the situation of structural impunity in Nicaragua. During the hearing, information will be presented especially on the following topics. Update on the serious human rights violations committed in Nicaragua since April 2018 and the impunity in which they remain. Then restrictions on the right of people to vote and to be voted for, which impedes the exercise of democracy and the absence of mechanisms to access electoral justice. And then co cooptation of the justice administration system and the need for the adoption of extraordinary international verification and accountability mechanisms. With that, I call on civil society to give us as much information as they can in the time allotted to them. Thank you. Good morning. Please identify Good morning. yourself as you speak. Thank you, Commissioner. Buenos dias y muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Good morning, Madam President, Commissioners, Madam Rapporteur, Commissioner, Executive Secretary, and the members of the hearing here. I am Guillermo from Sejil. I, I have the pleasure to share with the autonomous movement of women. Uh, open sources or Mas Abiertas and the International Federation for Human Rights. We regret the absence of the state in this important space of visibility and accountability on the critical situation the country is facing. We would also like to thank the Commission, their role play in the defense of uh, the um, rights of the peoples in Nicaragua and to grant this public hearing. When requesting this space, we are requesting the extraordinary measures on to uh, address the human rights violations that keep on occurring in the country. We will analyze the situation of impunity in the country. And we will refer to the regulation which has reduced the civic space to have uh, to make public decisions. We would also expose how the justice system has become a criminalization nation instead of being a uh, warrantor of the human rights. We will also say how the different accountability devices have also been deactivated in the country. And we will conclude with a series of petitions. I will give the floor to Dr. Vilma Nunez from Simil.
Good morning, everybody. A special greetings from Nicaragua, and we would like to thank you as usual. Honorable Commission, honorable representatives of the civil society, I would like to present an update of the violation of human rights in Nicaragua and the impunity that prevails. It's needless to say that since 2017, uh, 20, uh, 20, we leave uh, damage of human rights in 2018 we have a persecution that was divided in stage and it is characterized by new ways of reprisals the purpose has always been the same to perpetuate in power they acted facing uh, the storm people that was requesting human rights there is, there is, was not such thing as a coup d'etat. There was an attack by the regime against the society, which was full of claims and demands of justice. These addresses people, attacks people who were in the street. And these includes the journalist Ariel Gaon and the Ministry of Health is in this reprisal and denies to attend, uh, to provide medical attention to the detainees. There are mechanisms of defense that are sought by those people in order to prevent the actions of the aggressors and there's uh there is also a uh, criminalization of the protests and demonstrations it prohibits demonstrations no one can demonstrate in september 23rd a student was killed there are also kidnappings by police and paramilitaries and torture in clandestine jails and prisons aggressions to human rights ad advocates and the increase of institutional violence against women, aggression to indigenous peoples and Afro-descendant peoples, persecution to peace and especially in the north of the country, the crimes uh, committed by the regime of Ortega are 345 deaths, most of them as ex out of court actions, lots of people with these disabilities and several uh, political prisoners who were tortured arbitrarily. Lots of Nicaraguans had been forced to fled Nicaragua and all these cases are not investigated upon the state is responsible for the serious violation of human rights and of the out of court actions that were conducted and in at least 11 cases the meal documented that police actions led to the delivery of the corpses to the families and they had to sign a report so that the corpse would not be carried to so that the body would not be conducted to the uh, medical research facilities for the adequate uh, performance uh, the we documented 113 killed people that they come they are crimes against humanity and until when are we going to suffer that? We can see patterns, repetitive patterns in which the state and parastate stakeholders carried out systematic violations and generalized in many municipalities of the countries. They are then within the categories imposed by the commission of death by state officials and those that act uh, performing, in performing their uh, duties but knowing what they are doing. We have uh, 
lots of people who are deprived of their freedom due to political reasons. At least 169 people, among them 14 women and seven free candidates to president. And they were subjected to torture and treatment since February 1st, 2022. There were at least 45 people who were um, condemned arbitrarily in an out of court way, all of them due to money laundering, so as to uh, in help on the dissemination of fake news, and they were arbitrarily uh, judged. These, there is no state of law, rule of law, and no division of power. These are witnesses of a militarization, which is which has consequences on the Nicaraguan people. This is an obsessed regime, such as the one that we uh, face. This is the enemy. They, they see us as the enemy and many of their actions by the state in uh, such as laws that are passed in order to eliminate the essence of human rights. Honorable Commission, we are really concerned since these violations against life, integrity and uh, insecurity are not uh, investigated by the regime in Nicaragua, in spite of the efforts of this commission through the different programs and mechanisms, and if, in spite of the coordination for the office of the High Commissioner of the, of the United Nations. Thank you very much. I will give the floor to Natalia. Honorable Commission and representante de la Oficina. Honorable Commission and the justice and accountability in Nicaragua is not possible at this time due to the impunity institution that has been built up all throughout these years. Apart from Law 96 of Amnesty in 2019, created with the objective of leaving impune the crimes committed by uh, state officials and those particulars that act with their acquiescence. This regime tries to reduce the space for public scrutiny. We have denounced this in the semi, uh, in the report, new laws against reprisal. The re this answer by the regime has been justified on the idea that there was a coup d'etat and they uh, accused the people who, um, who were advocates of human rights. These we need to control on this. There are students, journalists and opponents and this is an attempt to not to let people to defend human rights impose fear and subject them to silence. We would like to underscore the case of Susana Chamorro, Walter Falca, San Pedro Vázquez, workers of the Foundation Violeta Vargas de Chamorro who were condemned under a reprisal model, accused of um, accusing their, their organizations through Law 977 against money laundering, which talks about uh, non-for-profit organizations and there is a broad definition and there are behaviors such as demonstrations that are considered uh, terrorist acts, acts between October 2020 and January 2021. Three laws were approved that um, infringes the law to the, the right to associate freely law 1040 on foreign agents 1055 of defending of peoples to independence and cyber crime cyber crimes once this uh, law was announced which imposes a control financial control and surveillance and blockades 
the international control, several organizations announced the exit of the country in order to avoid being subjected to this law. The first one was the Swedish uh, organizations we affect, which promoted projects against um poverty and some other organizations under law 1055 since may 2021 authorities started to arrest people using in all cases the only article of the law which doesn't recognize the principle of legality in order to uh don't not to let them participate for the elections there were seven candidates, elect, election candidates uh, detained. The law on cyber crimes was applied contrary to the um, Inter-American Convention. For instance, Irving Laders was condemned to three years of prison for conspirations on cyber crimes due to uh, posts on the pandemic 2019 made on her Facebook. The same happened with the other prisoners such as Donald Almarenga, Sabata Giron, Miriam Barbosa, and Evelyn Punta. To end with law 1060, which was applied to all prisoners since May 2021, extended the term of detention from 48 hours to 90 days, and there will be a complementary investigation without judicial formal project. These entails arbitrary detentions promoted by the uh, ministry. We value the judgment of the commission on this regulation and we call upon the state of Nicaragua to conduct all necessary actions to um, leave it without effect. But we are really worried by the fact that these instruments are to be deepened since 12th of February, the assembly carried out a consultation process of the legal uh, regulations and the Pro public prosecution office and the Supreme Court state that the framework created in these last few years strengthened the work of the judicial branch and it can be further deepened. Under this perspective, the Ortega regime with majority in the parliament has legalized 107 NGOs in Nicaragua since 2018, including 14 private university, 15 medical um, organizations, and six, and six um, humanitarian um, organizations related to the Catholic Church. Some of them were uh, expropriated and it also retired the license of three uh, European NGOs. This has a serious impact against the fight against impunity since they can map the uh, violation of human rights, they cannot attend to their beastings and they cannot enforce mechanisms for the warranty of their right. This framework led to a system of punishment which starts pre by preventing the, P the organizations from the civil society and human rights advocates controlling their financial movements and punishing them publicly for their for doing their job and uh, threatening the civil society with the use of the criminal law against them. I would like to give the floor to company Violeta Delgado. Good morning, honorable commissioners. The role of the system of justice administration of Nicaragua to guarantee the impunity uh, for the serious violations of human rights is what I would like to talk today. There is no sanction against the authorities responsible for the serious human rights violations were mentioned before. The judiciary has not exerted its control work and 
they have consolidated a repression system against civilian population. The system of justice administration has played a key role for criminalizing political opponents and to strengthen those structures that guarantee impunity. In the report about persons deprived of their liberty, the commission has documented that detentions, arbitrary detentions, have been a mechanism implemented by the state of Nicaragua since 2018 to repress opponents. The persecution for political reasons that could constitute a crime against humanity has been strengthened in the country through violations of due process of law and through the violation of the rights of persons deprived of their liberty arbitrarily. Among them, we have the lack of publicity or the lack of proceedings, the creation of fake evidence and witnesses, the excessive use of preventive detention. We also highlight the violations of the right to defense and the obstruction of the right to defense through attacks to lawyers. None of these violations has been duly investigated. Within this context, and as the commissioners are well aware, the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights adopted protection measures favoring 22 persons deprived of their liberty for political reasons within the framework of the elections in 2021. This included the seven presidential candidates and seven women human rights defenders. In spite of the request of the court to release immediately the beneficiaries of those measures and the request for the adoption of measures to protect their life, integrity, and personal freedom, the state did not comply with any of those requests. The patterns exposed before the court continue to exist. The Nicaraguan authorities continue to deny or reject access to visits for family members, and they are not complying with international standards and with domestic law. There is still a lack of access to meds and to treatment for health care. These are the cases of Lisean Jesus Castro Baltorano, who is at the hospital and he has been denied to comply with or to receive home pre or house detection. And we have also the case of Hugo Torres Jimenez, who died on February 22nd after weeks regarding lack of knowledge about his whereabouts. The authorities did not initiate any investigations or were, were not held accountable. Several convictions were issued against 35 of the people detained within the election time. The churches presented against them were because of the laws created recently and there is no compliance with the criminal code. The proceedings to charge them should have been oral and public and before the competent authority. Most of the trials were conducted in the same facilities of El Chipote, where they are arbitrarily detained. Out of 169 persons in, per, in prison, 14 are women. The youngest one is Samantha Yu. She is 21 years old. And Bielota Granera and Nidia Barbosa, they are 70 and 76 years old, respectively. They have pre-existing conditions and they had developed other diseases during imprisonment. Women in prison have been harshly punished. Tamara Avila was fully isolated for nine months in a cell. Those, she was isolated without no contact, but for the officials and she was punished for her actions. She is charged because she was, and then we have Violeta Granera. She's an older woman 
she's fa his fa her family has expressed her con uh, their concern about her health. She is not being able to feed herself. Deborah Marginez, she has been deprived of her liberty in a cell with men. Then there is a request for allow prisoners to have some protections, but those claims have not been listened to. Then we have also, there is no permission for them to leave prison and family members are not allowed to come to the country. Some minors are not allowed to have contact with their parents in prison. They have not allowed to send them letters or drawings. And this is a serious act of violence against these minors. Honorable commissioners, we confirm and we insist that the conditions of persons deprived of their liberty for political reasons are well are far away from what international standards establish and they are cruel degrading treatment and also we see psychological and physical torture against these persons thank you and now i would like to give the floor to ligia gomez from urnas abiertas honorable commissioners urnas abiertas would like to support the job of the organization in this hearing to say that the electoral fraud committed in Nicaragua last year perpetuates the impunity of the regime in their systematic violations of human rights in Nicaragua. The regime of Ortega and trying to be in power forever used several mechanisms that destroyed the legitimacy of the electoral process. And this led to several human rights violations. And it has been proved in 2021 with the, co uh, the uh, corruption or the destruction of all the institutions. And therefore we see that there are several repression units that just follow the instructions of the regime. The election fraud limited any type of political participation and the regime is the most is the re, is responsible for the fraud in last elections a repressive system was established was consolidated and this led to the de facto suppression of democratic channels towards political transition and the term of the regime was extended illegally and therefore the possibilities of Nicaraguans to choose their authorities were restricted, and also the possibilities to cooperate and to rebuild institutions were limited, were restricted. There were no independent organs or bodies of justice, and therefore there was no mechanism to investigate, to punish those persons and institutions that were committing crimes against civilians. Now we would like to report the barriers that exist in Nicaragua to access electoral justice mechanism. During the electoral process 2021, Unas Abiertas together with other political and human rights organizations recorded irregularities, electoral crimes and violations of human rights during this period and we documented the following. First, arbitrary detentions of candidates and other opponents, prohibition of the right to protest or to peaceful protest, censorship to pluralism, an increase of repression and harassment, persecution and use of political prison and forced displacement of opponents and journalists. Also, we observed the use of illegitimate or illegal proceedings, the arbitrary closure of three political parties, parties, and also the passing of a reform that violated fundamental freedoms. Um, during the day of voting, the elimination of electoral centers was confirmed the abusive use of poly, uh, public resources with electoral aims. And the electoral system was fully controlled by the governing party. 
to summarize, there were not ne the necessary conditions were not given for the citizens to exercise their right to vote. This has been proved and they are trying to end with democracy and to end with elections. It's important to highlight that in spite of the fact that many of these situations constitute electoral crimes, the electoral authorities did not guarantee the investigation and the sanctioning of the perpetrators of those crimes. These bodies or these authorities contributed to these crimes. The new presidential term of Ortega does not represent the popular will. It is a result of an illegal system that reinforces coercion measures against society, conditioning um, the, will, the desire of voters and did not guarantee comprehensive and good electoral process. We are concerned about the municipal elections that will conducted in November this year because we are afraid that those irregularities and electoral crimes and human rights violations will occur again. In recent weeks, we have witnessed the consolidation of judicial persecution that we have document that we documented last year. Six out of the seven candidates were convicted for going against sovereignty. They have faced irregular trials that are against due process of law. These in lead to crimes against humanity in political processes, and these crimes should be investigated and sanctioned. So that's what we are requesting, extraordinary measures to held those responsible accounted, accountable. Uh, taking into consideration the current human rights violations, including the right to vote and be voted, we would like to highlight the need and the importance of investigating the responsibility of the regime. Now I would like to give the floor to Maria Luisa Gomez from the Race and Equality Institute. Thank you. Honorable Commission, as you have heard, the situation of a structural impunity is absolute and has very serious situations on human rights of Nicaraguans. Today, more than ever, we need the international community, this commission and the other international protection mechanisms intensify their efforts to so that there is an impartial and independent investigation of the serious human rights violations committed by the regime respectfully, we would like for you to demand the state to continue with the release of all those persons that are in prison for political reasons, to end with their criminalization, to eliminate the legal framework that allows for their detention and to revoke their convictions. Second, after the release of these prisoners, the our these prisoners should be detained otherwise under dignified commissions and to guarantee access to health for their these people and to allow for them to be in contact with their family members. Third, to restitute the legal personality of the organizations who were cancelled. Additionally, we request this commission first to keep a good coordination actions with the UN system to provide expertise to the universal system and to support the creation of an international investigation system so that we advance on accountability and the sanction of those responsible for these violations to issue a joint pronouncement regarding the effects of this structural impunity system in our country and to advance on international accountability processes, to give visibility to the cases that are being processed in their system that would contribute to justice and reparation processes in our country, to request an advisory opinion to the court, taking into consideration the American Convention and the instruments that should be followed by the state and its institutions 
to avoid human rights violations with a differentiated approach and guaranteeing the integral reparation for the population that is affected. Also, to insist on the um, on the in local visit in the country to analyze the situation of political prisoners. The people of Nicaragua need justice and reparation for the crimes committed by the state since April 2018. We thank the commission for all the efforts in this matter. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much um, to civil society. Is that um, the end of your submissions? Thank you for keeping within the new allotted time. I, I neglected to tell you and remind you about the keeping your eye on the clock, but you've managed so well. I thank you all. Um, I now call on the country rapporteur, um, Commissioner Esmeralda de Jotino, to, um, in, no, no, no. I'm sorry, Esmeralda. I, I'm, I'm, I'm ignoring our representative from the UN, who should speak now, really. Um, Mr. Sanchez, you have um, seven minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, commissioners. I would like to greet all of you. I would like to thank you for allowing me to be part in this hearing of the 183rd period of sessions of the Inter-American Commission, taking into consideration the situation of human rights in Nicaragua. I'm working as ad hoc representative of Central America and the Caribbean of the um, High Commissioner Office. I'm here to present information without uh, regarding the situation of human rights in Nicaragua. None of my comments should be understood as an implicit renouncement of the Im immunities of the United Nations uh, in virtue of the Convention of 1976 regarding the privilege of UN officials. Taking into consideration uh, the comments of the civil society organizations and since the state of Nicaragua is not here, I would like to thank uh, civil society organizations for being here. Seven days ago, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights presented before the UN Human Rights Council her last report on the situation of Nicaragua. And the document includes information regarding impunity against the serious human rights violations that were committed since 2018. The report recommends the state of Nicaragua to design and to apply an action plan and an accountability part plan and a package of measures to guarantee access to justice and to reparation. In its oral presentation, in her oral presentation, the high commissioner says said that accountability is at the center of the rule of law. And the, high, the deputy high commissioner said that the first obligation of the state of Nicaragua is to be held accountable for all the violations committed since the beginning of the crisis. Several member states and organizations of civil society who participated in the dialogue underscored the need to take measures in order to guarantee accountability in Nicaragua, given the situation of impunity in the country. Since mid last year, there was an increase in the number of violations of human rights in the country, especially within the electoral situation. Before the elections of November the 7th, the legal personality of three, of three organizations and political parties was canceled and six presidential candidates were detained. Since the beginning of this year, these persons are being subjected to criminal proceedings and they are being convicted to disproportionate sentences of over 13 years. And they are not being allowed to occupy or to take public positions. And their freedom of expression is also being prohibited as it has been uh, done or monitored by our office in the last three years, these procedures are not, or these proceedings are not respecting due process of law. The hearings of these cases have been 
closed door secret and the accused are not able to witness these hearings. Lawyers and defenders are not allowed to contact their defendants, but only a few minutes before the hearings, and they cannot check the files we beforehand. And the uh, access to evidence is also limited. Since January, in January, 42 persons were convicted, one person every two days, that was the average. These persons are not being judged with integrity, and therefore we see that the administration of justice in Nicaragua is not operating take, uh, in, or is not working diligently in the investigation of over 300 people since 2018, and they are not investigating the human rights violations committed since then. In 2019, the amnesty law did not to take into consideration international standards, and that law was a mechanism used to favor impunity. Today, the behavior of justice operators that follow the government's narrative and do not comply with their duty to impart justice and guarantee rights is a factor that allows for keeping impunity. The Commission and the High Commissioner Office and other international human rights mechanisms have insisted on the obligations of the state of Nicaragua to guarantee the right to justice, to truth, and to the reparation of the victims, as well as non-repetition guarantees. We will continue insisting with our demand. The responsibility of material authors and intellectual authors of the serious crimes committed in Nicaragua should be determined. International law has the tools and has the mechanisms to prevent impunity to continue to exist in these serious crimes, and we need justice to prevail. It's important to mention that during the dialogue within the Human Rights Committee, there were several requests from the states and from civil society organizations so that intergovernmental institutions advance to establish one of these mechanisms. Within this framework, it is fundamental that international and regional organizations and civil society organizations and human rights defenders organizations and victim organizations and family organizations continue to document the human rights violations occurring in Nicaragua. Ladies and gentlemen, commissioners, again, I would like to thank you on behalf of the High Commissioner of the United Nations for Human Rights to invite our office to participate in this hearing. And we would like to reiterate our commitment and our solidarity to all the Nicaraguan victims and their families. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sanchez, and you've so well managed your time. Thank you. And now I'm happy to um, welcome us, my sister commissioner, um, Esmeralda de Trotino, who is the country rapporteur for Nicaragua. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to express I would like to read in solidarity, especially all people, men and women, Nicaraguan men and women that have been facing the effects and the impacts of the violations of on the human rights. In as a rapporteur for Nicaragua, I would also like to acknowledge the civil society organizations that have been present in this struggle, that have been raising the flag of justice and have been claiming for their rights. And they have also allowed the Inter-American Commissions of Human Rights to have this monitoring to have this information and you are really committed and we thank you for that 
to each of you who are here today. I would like to acknowledge you for that great work. To my colleagues, I would like to read them as well after our on-site uh, events in Washington, the, sec the, ex the Secretary Secretary and all the team that makes these hearings possible. They are really key to the Commission because we can hear the information the testimonies that you have gathered. This is a privileged forum, I would say. But I would like to address the Nicaraguan state. The government, the administration of Ortega Murillo. I regret you, they are not present that its authorities cannot be here today with us because what we have heard today, it's a lot of information. And we would like to thank the civil society organizations but we would like them to hear your stance, to hear how their justice system, their legislative body can have something that explains from their view, from their analysis, this situation the situation that was put forward here. We regret they are not present because in my condition as country reporter, I had insisted the Nicaraguan government and the authorities on the opportunity to hold a dialogue, to listen to you, to hear you. And unfortunately, we have not had a positive answer to that request. Therefore, after hearing the representative of the high commissioner of the uh, Andres Sanchez, this call to the responsibility of human rights body because the international law provides us with the tools so that this situation in Nicaragua can be addressed, can be addressed from this vision from the regional concept what the responsibility of the state means in the search of an answer to uh, protection of democracy of the state of law and rule of law and uh, institutionality so thank you mr andres because we do feel that in this partnership we need to somehow look for, and that is what the organizations requested today, we need to look for extraordinary measures. The action plans have to be established as a strategy for this regional vision, for this universal vision as well, for this universal perspective of all countries of, in the world because the violation of human rights that are today described in a very clear way i can list lots of words the operation cleansing massive criminalization express kidnap torture violence and there is a long list of expressions that describe this reality and that we are uh, we need to address. I would like to ask to make two comments in order to build this strategy. The justice system has the main response 
responsible body for the access or the lack of access, let's say, to justice for the satisfaction of human rights, of essential human rights, which has to do with the impunity on the one hand in the investigation of the facts of these violations, but also the reprisal and criminalization, absolute criminalization of people that defend human rights, of human rights advocates. So this is the situation of the judicial system, which is key because even though the legislative body can apply or can promote these laws that are laws that um, have that conduct reprisal and that have these objectives that are anti-democratic that may, that place the population that they may dissent and they may protest against uh, human rights violation, violations, laws see those, those people as enemy and enemy has to be destroyed. So having a human rights system that facing those laws, this power that the judge has, that the magistrates have of a constitutional court in order to address the different human rights treaties on Nicaragua, where Nicaragua is a party to. So they are forced to use that legal order and not those laws that are exerting reprisal. So that is that ha that has to be part of our strategy in order to address this in a clear way. This has also been requested by the organizations that we can attend to with um, in an expedite way this situation. And the other aspect I would like to underscore is the situation. And I would like to say this in my condition as rapporteur for children's rights, this right that is also being infringed upon of many children who have had their families, their parents detained, and it has been impossible for them to communicate with them. When I speak about this point of view, I would like to call upon also the civil society organizations so that they can document this and to this responsible institutionality of the protection of children's rights so that they are subjected to the public scrutiny, which is the response that they are undertaking in these petitions or in this reality or facing this reality. So I would like to acknowledge And I would like to assume our responsibility as Central American commissions. I am sure that my colleagues support this position. We are committed to moving forward towards a strategy that we need to build upon in with the regional vision in an extraordinary way because we cannot leave uh, we can there there is no longer time there is no more time sorry for extending madam president but i took some of the minutes from the civil society thank you um thank you very much um commissioner esmeralda um i understand this country rapporteur and this because of the situation of nicaragua um i now call upon the commissioner Joel. Um, gracias, gracias, Presidenta. Muchas Thank gracias. you, Madam President. Good morning, everybody, my colleagues, members of the Commission. 
Executive Secretary and the members of the civil society present here in, I can see familiar faces. Miss Bilma, I would like to reach you, all of you who have carried out a great struggle for democracy and human rights in Nicaragua. I believe that the uh, distinguished nuance of this hearing is once again the absence of the state. An absence that we have been seeing a long time ago since over four years ago, when I entered, first entered the commission, the state of Nicaragua was absent in all the hearings. But the absence has become especially worse after the tur turmoil in April 2018, even though there was a window of opportunity for a presence by the uh, High Commissioner Officer for Human Rights and the Commission, that window was closed in December 2018. And since then, we did not have uh, the presence of the state. Why is it serious? Well, because we cannot hold a dialogue if the dialogue, if the state is not present in these conversations. And the absence is serious as well because there is a denial by the state to the reality that is being lived in Nicaragua, which is translated into the closure of all democratic spaces and forums in Nicaragua. This then does not allow us to re revert, reverse this situation. In spite of this absence, I would like to acknowledge the um, the courage of the civil society organizations to keep the Nicaraguan topic on the agenda, on the agenda of the OAS and the Inter-American System of Human Rights and of the Office of the High Commissioner and the Council of Human Rights of, United, of the United Nations. That is really important because we all have responsibility, shared responsibility to keep this topic on agenda so as to keep on creating and updating international perception in today as to the serious situation in Nicaragua. I would like to invite you to not to be biased on this effort so that any time we can meet to examine the situation of Nicaragua to be present and the commission, we will always be present and we will pay attention to your hearings. The worst in this uh, absence is, uh, would be to have the, silent, the silence from you would, because it would, we would think that the situation in Nicaragua has become normal and what happens in Nicaragua, it's part of an everyday reality in a world which is really complex. This cannot be so. This topic cannot disappear from our agenda, the situation of human rights in Nicaragua. So I would invite you to be always present. You have the commitment of the commission. We are clear about the amount of violations of human rights, a very um, professional work and systematic work carried out by the Meseni with your support. There is a clear X-ray of what has happened during the last few four years, and it's a situation which keeps on updating on a daily basis with the participation, uh, with your participation. Now, since we have the presence of Mr. Andres Sanchez, I would like to ask him as well, which has been the participation of Nicaragua in the United Nations. He has already told us that there was an interactive dialogue within the period of sessions of the Council of Human Rights. And I would like to know whether the Nicaraguan state was present. And I would also like to 
uh, to see whether he can share conversations on the office of the high commissioner with the purpose of resuming interrupted cooperation with international organizations. The resolution of the Human Rights Council speak about the resume, the cooperation with the Office of the High Commissioner, but also with the Inter-American system. And this is very important to us. This is significant to us because I once more believe that the only way to open a forum for exchange is to recognize the situation of human rights uh, in Nicaragua. I would like to close by adding that regardless of the situation, the commission is fully aware that Nicaragua is a state party of the Amer Inter-American Commission that recognizes the um, jurisdiction of the court and the commission will keep on executing these uh, jurisdiction in regardless of the uh, claim that the that Nicaragua has posed uh, against the, o, the OAS. Thank you, Madam Macaulay, for this opportunity. Thank you, um, my brother, Commissioner Howell. I now um, call on Commissioner Carlos Bernal for your intervention. I hope you will watch the clock because we have the special rapporteur um, still to call on. Thank you. Perfecto. Muchas gracias, eh, Presidenta Macaulay. Eh, yo entiendo eh, que este panorama es un panorama. Thank you. Chair Macaulay, I understand that this is part of a structural and deep crisis. It's a tragedy in, of human rights in Nicaragua. So I have a question for civil society. I would like to know that together with this dramatic, catastrophic crisis, the only solution might be a radical solution, but I don't know if civil society organizations can mention some facts that could be understood as uh, early victories or things that could help, um, for example, anything that the commission could do, everything that had to do with the process, etc. At least to have a small victory that could help relieve Nicaraguans in this systematic situation, in this situation of systematic violations of human rights. Thank you. Thank you so very much, um, uh, Commissioner Bernal. Um, uh, and I now invite the Special Rapporteur Pedro uh, Vaca or to intervene if he wishes. Presidenta, sí, sí quiero intervenir, pero creo que también la Secretaría Ejecutiva tiene levantada la, la, la mano y no sé si fuera posible que nos pudieran extender un poco más. Um, uh, Madam President, the Executive Secretary is requesting the floor as well, so maybe I we see, can have I a, see that. additional I time. See that. Sí, gracias, Presidenta Macaulay, y gracias. Yes, Madam President, Madam Chair Macaulay, and thank you, Rapporteur Pedro Vaca. First of all, I would like to greet civil society organizations from Nicaragua. I would like to thank them because they are civil society organizations who are in the field and who report uh, very frequently. They gave uh, they give give us very specific data about what's happening. I don't want to add much more to what Commissioner Rosemena or Commissioner Hernandez said. But what I would like to say is that our experience after the testimonies that we received through the Meseni, we believe that we need to keep memory or a record of what's happening in Nicaragua. We are fully convinced that we are a we are helping to keep a record so that when there is different conditions, when we have democracy back, we can search for justice or we can seek for justice and reparation for the victims. And this implies that annual report chapter four, Nicaragua is always included. We have very important information that you provide us with and the team of Meseni is collecting that information constantly. In addition, 
since last year and this year we are sending measures from the commission to the court and we are monitoring the results of those measures and even though that the state is not having much dialogue with the inter-american system of human rights right now we know that those elements will stay and they are also a record so that we we have the time for justice for transition for reparation we are going to be there providing information about all these years. We have all the testimonies, the precautionary measures, uh, the provisional measures, and the monitoring. Thank you, Commissioner McCauley, and the country reporter for following up on Nicaragua. Thank you, um, um, Madam Secretary, Executive Secretary. Um, Pedro Vaca, Special Rapporteur. Muchas gracias, eh, Presidenta. En primer lugar, Thank you, Madam President. First, I would like to say that I really admire the resilience of civil society organizations and human rights defenders because they keep their work in spite of the situation that they describe in this here. And we see that there is an arbitrary deployment of institutional efforts to close the public space. We would like to thank them for their support. We need to say that we are documenting everything that happened, that is happening, but we know that there is a human cost. We know that there is a lot of sacrifice. And I would like to recognize that sacrifice and I would like to show my empathy and solidarity. These convictions uh, in which we include, or we see different elements that show that they are not. You see a black. And part uh, what we are seeing that the criminalization is pointing out to several, how there is several exercises or several guarantees within freedom of expression, such as journalist freedom, political participation, and all these elements of freedom of expression are being targeted by the, by the government, by the state of Nicaragua. I would like to highlight the role of the organization of, of the organizations of civil society because they are doing actions that are so important for the democratic and for the rule of law. And I would like to thank because they help promote quality journalism. It's important that journalists takes care, journalists take care of their competences. And I have a question that has to do with trials. I would like to ask those who requested this hearing. I don't know if they can reply this now or if they can see that this could be done by written, writing. We would like to have information about the records and the availability of material in this hearing. It's a very important aspect that we are trying to monitor. Thank you. I believe that Commissioner Margaret is not here. We cannot see her. Secretary. Tanya. Thank you, Commissioner Arosemena. Now we would like to give the floor to civil society organizations. I don't know if you have organized yourselves to have the second round of comments, we have 11 minutes. So Maria Luisa Gomez, you have the floor now. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you, Commissioners and the team of the Meseni and all those persons today at the hearing. I would like to reply to answer some of the questions, for example, the question of Commissioner Bernal. And I would like to say that the biggest victory that we can have is to have your support, your work, 
the work of monitoring that you are doing to raise awareness uh, through public releases and other actions is to report on the human rights violations that are being committed in Nicaragua since 2018 is something that is really helpful because it helped us to make this situation visible so that this issue is on the agenda. And we thank you for the joint work that you are doing with other international protection mechanisms. And in this regard, I, we believe that it could be really helpful as we have said before, and as we have pointed out in other on other occasions, it's important that uh, there is an effective and early treatment of the cases or processing of the cases that are under uh, in your portfolio, because this helps us to advance on this. Uh, processes of justice and reparation, especially in everything that has to do with comprehensive or integral measures of reparation and non-repetition guarantees. And we want you to continue granting provisional measures and precautionary measures to make visible those cases and the situation of the victims. This could lead to small victories for the work that we do as civil society organizations. And I would like to insist on the specific uh, role that you play when supporting us so we can raise our voice to have an international protection mechanism or monitoring mechanism that documents with accuracy all the human rights violations. We need to advance on this accountability mechanism at an international level. And the work of uh, reporting and monitoring of the commission will be very important when that international mechanism is established. We would like to thank you for your support with the creation of this mechanism. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Luisa. I would like to know if any anybody else from civil society is here. Madam Secretary. Sorry, Commissioner. Madam Secretary, I'm back. Sorry about the Señora break in my um, I, 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 Tuve un problema. Yes. Well, who, does anybody in civil society want to say it? Please just do it in the order that you wish within the time allotted to you. Doctor Avila, quisiera, quisiera reaccionar sobre el tema de registro. Adelante. Uh, would you like to react? Yes. Oh, as regard... Margaret oh, is having oh, well, some no, communication no, no. issues. No, I, I, I would not. Uh, I was not going to take up time to make a comment. I was going to leave my comments on to, for my closing. So please, civil society, go on. Um, I hope Maria Claudia, you didn't wish to intervene. So, okay. civil society, please. Yes, please. If, well, I, I, am I allowed? Yes. I wanted to talk briefly about the question made by the special rapporteur on freedom of expression about the possibility of understanding all the things that are happening in the processing and on the proceedings and the trials. And we would like to show why we believe that it's not an adequate processing or those cases. Uh, we would like to send him all the information that we have regarding what's happening in those proceedings. But what we are seeing is that um, lawyers are facing all these issues because not even at the end of the hearings, they are not provided with the files, with the documentation, with the minutes of the hearing. As human rights organizations, we are following up on the processing of those trials. And even in midnight, we are trying to record uh, everything that's happening. And lawyers are trying to give us that information sometimes is three or four days until they receive the minutes of the hearings. So it's very difficult to have concrete information about what's happening. Everything is prepared so that the truth is not revealed. 
and this is to guarantee the impunity. That's what they want. I don't know if I'm answering your question, Rapporteur. Could you, um, uh, Wilma, are you finished? Uh, yes, thank you. Could the next person intervene, please, on behalf of civil society? No more. Bueno, como sociedad civil, urnas abiertas. No more. Uh, civil society, urnas abiertas. Ligia is taking the floor. Yes. Please, please go on. Go on, Ligia. 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 Ligia wants to take the floor. Thank you. A civil society organizations, urba, urnas abiertas would like to reiterate the importance of continued monitoring election, electoral processes. Currently this year, we will have elections in spite of the fact that the minimum conditions are not met. We will have municipal elections. We know that 18 municipalities are not governed by the current government and we would like to monitor human rights within these electoral processes. We consider that these processes are fundamental. We need to resume the path of democracy, and we hope that we have a peaceful transition to democracy and that respects the right to vote of Nicaraguans. That's what we would like to highlight. Thank you. Um, um, could the next person? Hey, Bill, you wish to speak again? I would like to say something. Just one more minute. I don't know how much time do we have. Please, please go on, Wilma. You have, you have um, another 12 minutes. In this discussion, I would like to inform the commission and all those who are hearing, when we talk about impunity in Nicaragua, this impunity is not only about extrajudicial executions that we have been able to document or to report. And we are not talking about the things that happened in the first two years. What we are seeing is that impunity is now a system here because there is all the time serious and systematic violations of human rights. We are seeing those violations every day and everything seems to be ignored. People are being silenced. And since we cannot react before any authority, everything is in impunity. It's a situation of accumulated impunity. It's not only about the serious situations that occurred during the first months and during the first year of repression, but we have also everything that has happened over time. There is not a single day in which no violations of human rights are committed. Every day we have human rights violations against human rights defenders. And the question that we have, or we ask ourselves is we need, we need your support because we need to report on to document the victims and everything that's happening. But we need to ask ourselves as civil society, do we have the possibility to say that there is a trial at least for two or three cases? No, we have no trials. And when there is an opening of a case, sometimes it's to cover up other forms of impunity or to uh, try it or to uh, persons that are innocent. That's what they are doing. So what we are seeing is that the state of, of Nicaragua is violating human rights. Thank you. Um, anyone else from civil society? 
Sí, no? buenas, buenos días, comisionada. Good no, morning, no, comisioner. Natalia. Oh, okay. After you, no. then Natalia. Violeta. Eh, no quiero dejar. No, eh, Violeta first, then Natalia after. Gracias. My mic is on. Thank you. I just want to, can you hear me? I am trying to emphasize what Commissioner Arosemena said regarding the huge impact uh, that all this is having on Nicaraguan children, that especially the children of political prisoners since they have no content with their contact with their parents and that's why we need urgent measures urgent actions because of the serious violations of the rights of these children of these girls boys and i would like to also highlight the pressure under which the family members of political prisoners are because especially when they complained about the situation of their family members who are in prison, they are forced to remain in silence in order to have some access to them or to have some contact with the persons that are in prison. This is a huge limitation that we have in order to systematize and document these cases because family members are subjected to silence because of the regime. Regime, thank you. Um, hello, can you hear me? Hello, yes. Um, yeah. Does anybody, oh yes, um, Natalia. Which is uh, I just want to insist on the concern that I express regarding the review of criminal laws that is being conducted in the country. And this is being supported by the highest bodies and highest authorities in Nicaragua, because these regulations uh, promote the criminalization of those spaces of expression of a civil and independent, or civilian and independent society. Uh, these laws are a concern. So it's important that the Messini and the Commission continue to monitor the situation to uh, report these horrible situations in Nicaragua. Thank you. Um, does, does anybody else um, wish to speak? Or, because we can have three seconds. <laughs> no? Sí. Okay. Yes, I would. Oh, sorry, Commissioner. Maria, Maria. Yeah. Sí, muchas gracias. Seconds, Thank right? you, so. Commissioner. Bien, muchas gracias. Reforzar el comentario del señor Hernández respecto a. Thank la you. I would like to highlight the comment of Commissioner Hernández regarding the participation before the UN system. It's a pity that the state uh, uh, appeared before the Economic, Social, and Cultural Committee of the United States nations but they did not answer any questions so the state is not collaborated with the universal system and i think that the state should participate in the following reviews for example sedao the human rights council uh, they are uh, scheduled for october and i we believe that the state should collaborate even though that they have not collaborated with treatment bodies thank you Thank, thank you very much. I now um, will close very quickly, if you will permit me. Um, um, I, I am we're all aware of having heard what you have said um, in this, this um, hearing, the second hearing, and also with the intervention of Mr. Sanchez from the United Nations and the commissioners who had, and the executive secretary who had the opportunity to speak. Um, it is quite clear that the situation in, in, in Nicaragua is, was bleak and it's become bleaker. And, and um, 
I, I will refer, I'm not going to repeat anything that has been said uh, because I do not wish to waste time. I adopt what my brother and sister, brothers and sister commissioners have said and what and listen avidly to what you have said. But I want to make specific mention of the breakdown in the administration of justice, which exacerbates the violations of all the other human rights um, within the state of Nicaragua. Um, and, and which assures, I, and I wish, wish to assure you that the commission will continue with its involvement, with the monitoring it does, and will also seek to do whatever it can in, 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 in trying to advance Nicaragua to a change of the, what the authoritarian um, regime, which seems to have taken hold and to revert back to democratic standards and principles and ways of government. Um, I, I particularly wish to thank civil society for your intervention and your pro provision to us of, of all these facts that you've given us and to applaud your courage and your persistence in fighting for the protection of the rights of the people of Nicaragua. We really cannot thank you enough. I don't think there's language enough to thank you for, for what you've been doing and will continue to do. I also wish to thank Mr. Sanchez for being with us today, for giving us um, the UN perspective and information and to um, at, at, um, suggest that we work even in closer collaboration in relation to Nicaragua because collaborative action is much stronger than singular. And um, we hope then we'll get better if, uh, effectiveness in trying to end the impunity in every regard in, in um, um, Nicaragua. Um, I wanted to mention also um, our thanks to the ex executive secretary, to the, my, my commissioner colleagues in the first place and to the executive secretary and to the assistant executive secretary, Maria Claudia, who understandably didn't take the time to intervene and the special rapporteur of freedom of expression and to all members of the secretariat. But lastly, but not least, I repeat again and call out the good work of the civil society for working for Nicaragua and all those who participated in this um, session by listening, uh, um, even though they might not have had an opportunity to speak. And we hope and will continue to work avidly with you. Please keep on sending us information because that gives us the, the tools that we need with updated information that we can act uh, either singularly, but most especially in collaboration with the United Nations with whom we will share information so that we can act effectively. Thank you so very much. And I'm sorry again that I lost power for a while. Um, and I bid you adieu and the best of luck and success in your work. Thank you. Gracias. Buenas tardes. Gracias. 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 Good afternoon. Thank you.